Another subject, uh, many, many doubts, well, a subject that creates many doubts, many problems in students, is the approach to Trill. I can see that sometimes, you know, it's a little bit like pizzicato, that while with the bow, more or less, we know we have to study and, uh, and uh, we have got different uh, types of bow, bow tie, bowing types, you know, and well, like, like with pizzicato, sometimes pizzicato is like is one only thing, a trillo is one only thing. So when many students, when they get to a trillo, they get completely <laughs> something that you can't even understand what, what, what you know what, what they are playing. Well, trillo once more is something that we must work and practice in a way that we get the full control of it. So it's a very similar. To the, to, to the way in which I approach to the vibrato. So slow first and then fast and then faster and then over fast and then go back, you remember. And, uh, but trill is a bit the same thing. So, then faster, really fast. And independent from bowing, like we said before. <laughs> See what I mean? The bow has his own history, has his own life. And the, the, the trill works very much like vibrato. So when you practice a trill, now, why I need this? Because also tr trill has even more than vibrato. It needs to be to be in some way, to have a sort of measurement. It must be measured in, in some way. You must have under control what you are doing because otherwise it gets very difficult to start it and especially to finish it because the end of the trill should be sort of consequential to, to link to the notes that follow the trill, not having any, any holes or, or, or any unclearness. Everything we do, I mean, we must get rid of everything that makes things unclear, even on the double bass. <laughs> uh, so, for instance, in, and also the trill changes quite uh, dramatically in, uh, in the centuries. So, um, in, in, especially in the Baroque uh, era, in the, in the Baroque period, Trillo was, had always a measurement and sometimes not even too fast because very often you had to follow it with the cembalo. So the cembalo, you know, is like little, little plucks. So, so maybe in Baroque, in a slow moment of a Baroque piece, this could already be a nice trill. Especially if you go with the chamber. So very often, if you are not with the chamber and you are on your own, also the trillo is a life of its own. Often it's nice to make the trillo start uh, have a start not trillando the note, and then it sort of gets faster until it reaches the, the speed and then it, it resolves on the next note. What I mean? For example... You see what I mean? I must do in a way that... The, that at the end I'm... So I'm on the demi quavers, let's see. Um, uh, or... Uh, I'm thinking now uh, where, where could be a nice trill to show you. Echo. You see, that's a Sarabando Bach, for instance. Uh, 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 anche, aspetta. back so you see how how the trillo starts slow then reaches the right speed and then it joins to the other note 
E, Mozart is full of... Always like that. So... Now, it depends from the tempo. Per, yeah, Dittersdorf, for instance, is full of trill. So this is the tempo. Let's suppose. Etc. So one, two, three, four. Well, I should go. So they look like triplets. So see. Some sort of triplets inside. Yeah, you can. In any case, you can decide the speed. Look, still not. Slow triplet. Triplet. You see. So very often you can decide between a triplet trillo or a or a sixteenth note trillo. Or starting with the triplet. You see what I mean? How how well uh, how, how clear it is in this way, even for for a listener that that is not a sort of mess, you know. It's a little bit different if we go if we go in a later period of, of history of music, maybe that the trillo sometimes is nice fast. But always as a little trick I could suggest to keep the interval slightly high, slightly large. So when we make a, a, tr a trillo is better that uh, it's better that it's slightly uh, larger than the proper tune because in the speed if I make it really in tune we result slightly flat to me. You know, it's so sometimes when it's really fast, it's better to keep a, a slightly larger um, distance between the two notes to make it clear in a way so that we can get that that is not just the same note with the vibrate. So that's that's a good good thing.